All right, let's talk about some of the differences between a big party rental business and a small party rental business. I, I was walk, I was looking at some of the uh, the discussions on one of the social media sites the other day, and I saw someone who was describing, you know, his prices and his ability to rent and deliver a bounce house, and everybody was kind of getting on him about the fact that his price was so low and that. You know, he, he should expand into other things. And he had some, some valid points. He was in a high competition area where, where everybody's price, the price point had kind of been, you know, beaten down by the by the competition. And also he was in an area where it was uh, a lot of densely populated residential area where there wasn't a lot of yards. So the bigger units were out of the question. It was all small stuff. So he, he didn't have a whole lot of ways to grow out of his business in that direction. Also, he and his wife had a full-time job, so they were doing this part-time and they didn't have a lot of time. So if you're doing that as a side hustle or as a part-time job, as a as the little guy, then you know there are only a certain amount of things that you can do to kind of make your business grow if you want to grow. Uh, you, you really want to get into a, a, a kind of a feel of where you are and, and, and decide how big you want to be. If you're looking just to, to add, supplement your income and add a couple thousand dollars a month and, uh, you know, that's all you really want to do, then you need to build your business with that in mind. Um, if you want to get bigger, uh, you need to you know, focus on the steps that it's going to take to, in order to grow your business and, and get to the point to where you, you have an um, advantage of, of, you know, growing bigger and, and getting into a bigger size. What you do not want to do is to be a small guy and emulate a big guy or be a big guy and act like a small guy. So you, need, you really need to decide where you're at and move in the direction that you, you want to go, but avoid trying to act out of your, out of your place because it will create some huge problems um, for for your business. And, and, and I can give you a kind of an example. Um, if you are a small inflatable company and you try to do bigger events and you you put all of your equipment together and you go and you do this event and that event gets canceled or rained out or, or you know a situation like that you have lost all of your income for that week that is a little guy trying to be a big guy um, if you're the big guy obviously you have uh, more units and you're 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 diversified and you got you're doing this event and you're also doing some backyard parties so it, you're not going to lose everything and you could still kind of shift your employees around and you could still make some money even if you lose half your business you're still making some pretty decent money on the flip side if you're a big guy and all you're doing is backyard stuff and you know just kind of eating up all the all the little little rentals the little slides and bounces and stuff like that because it's it's you know easy pickings and stuff you are going to find it very very difficult to get beyond an income that is just your income and to build a business out of this you're never going to get to the point where you're making enough money that you can hire employees buy extra trucks get into bigger equipment or something like that so if you're a big guy and you're, you're acting small, it's gonna put you in a position to where you cannot grow uh, no matter how hard you try. Because I'm here to tell you, you can deliver as many jumps as you can physically deliver bounce houses, but the price point on those are just gonna, not gonna be enough for you to, 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 to get outside of the box that's gonna be necessary for you to grow. So if you're a little guy, what can you do to kind of add value to your business um, and make it to where you're you're doing more money? Um, and again, in, in the example that I was talking about, the guy was talking about that he did tables and chairs and, and he did bounce houses and he had a set price and everyone was saying, well, that's crazy, that's a lot of money or that's not enough money for the amount of work that you're doing. And he was basically saying that that's all he could do. Now, what you can do to go beyond that is to 
create an opportunity for premium items. So, for instance, if you had some themed bounce houses, if you have regular bounce houses at a, at a set price, let's just say, for example, $80. And I know that's going to be low for some, some of you guys, but let's just say a regular bounce house, and you're renting it for $80 in, in your neighborhood, how do you go beyond that? You know, obviously tables and chairs, but again, you can only get so much out of tables and chairs and they're very, very labor intensive. But what if you offered this bounce house for 80, but you had a, a superhero themed bounce house that you could offer for 110. So now you're in a situation where uh, you have a, a different inflatable uh, that you're going to call a premium inflatable and you're going to offer both of those to the customers and you'll be surprised how many of them will pay that extra money just to have that that themed inflatable and make a difference in there so going beyond just adding small items to it concessions tables chairs tents those kind of things you can create premium items within your inventory so that you can go beyond what you, what you're doing um Finding your niche and sticking to your niche is absolutely imperative. And you also need to make sure that what you're doing is um, optimizing those rentals in, in your area. You don't want to get to the point to where you're turning too many customers away and saying, oh, I don't have the equipment for that because I'm book all booked out. But you don't want to get to the point to where you are booking so many pieces uh, so few pieces that you're not making the money that you need to make. Um, if you have five bounce houses or six bounce houses and some tables and chairs, you need to do the amount of marketing it takes to rent that amount of equipment and then stop or slow down or move into another weekend or do whatever it takes to continue to grow, to, to get your rentals, but not grow beyond the, the, the fact that you got, um, a good way to do this is to use the social media things and then to pop a piece up, say, I have this piece, who wants it, and try to sell it on the fly. You can also do things like take pieces. If you have a slow weekend and you got five units and three of them are out and you still got two in the warehouse, go to where people are having parties, like at your parks and things like that, and see if you can't just sell them on the fly right there you know, at the park. You got to be careful with these because you don't want your stuff stolen. So make sure you get ID and make sure you do, you know, the proper steps to make sure that you, know, you get it done. But you can sell items right there on the fly and it makes it easier for you to, to make sure you're getting all your stuff out there. Um, keep doing the things that, that, uh, that are working for you. And let's, let's have a discussion about that. Also like, and subscribe. And I appreciate you guys to see you on the next video.